This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Don't let your kids watch it! Hey there, Artie! A pitch black miasma permeated from inside the store. Did they all want to win the $500 yeah, that much? No, that's not right. The only ones competing for the prize money were the casual participants. I was different. I had mistaken this as just a way to fool around on a normal Sunday. It didn't matter to me, or it, it didn't matter when it was, or where it was, or who our opponents were. In our club, the goal was always the very top of the mountain. An intense flame that no strong winds could extinguish, hot enough to melt any steel, began to burn inside me. Nice sound effects. The fuse had been lit on this unprecedentedly intense club battle. <laughs> it was then that the owner of the store told Mion in a lackadaisical voice that it was about time to begin. Hey, the owner doesn't get a sprite? Guess he's not important. Mion began with the formalities, standing in for the owner and explained the rules of today's tournament. You're only playing to win. There is no second or third place. That's the same rule as our club. <laughs> when they play Star Wars Episode One Pod Racing, they always select winner take all. There were 15 people participating. We were split into five groups via a draw, and each group would have one winner. Each winner in the first stage would advance to the next in order to compete in the final. Yep, so it's a bracket system. Wait, any game? So literally people could play any game like, I won in Hi-Ho Cheerio! I was like, I won in chess. It's like, okay, I feel like the skill levels were not proven in that situation. Already in club mode DEFCON 1, I didn't let the small gap in the rules go unnoticed. <laughs> Let's play Connect 4. I go first. The spectators also nodded alone. It was only natural. There wasn't anybody who would simply cede to their opponent's suggestion. Mm, I, I could go for that. It was an event at a toy store, after all. You'd expect the owner to referee. After that, Mion's rundown continued. It ended with the rule that any losing participants would have to buy the game they lost at. A rather nice proposition for the store. Wow, that store is gonna make bank! If I had, if I legit had to select a board game or like a card game or some kind of a game that I was confident I could win at, I think I would pick Dominion. I'm quite good at Dominion, and, and it, Dominion is also one of those games. It's it's my favorite board game. Slash card game, it's actually a card game. And it's one of those games where I really have fun even if I lose. So that's that's what I would go with. First, we used a, a, uh, we used a draw to split in uh, to five group. We used a draw to split into five groups. Okay. Everybody lined up single file and began to draw tickets oh, that the shop owner had prepared. Okay. Now it was my turn. Alright, time to draw. No matter who I was up against, I'd crush them! At that moment, Mion began to laugh with a hawkish gleam in her eye. How about we just play for fun? And $500. <laughs> I love the bass in this song. The winner gets to give the losers one. That is incredibly vague, and I do not accept that. Contrary to how simple it sounded, it was a terrifying eventuality, the subject of which no one could predict. Damn you, Mion. Was she really planning on parading me around Hinamizawa in cat ears and a banana hammock with a tail attached or something? Yeah, she would. I saw what happened in the, uh, the first timeline. Or the first chapter, or whatever it is. The look on Mion's face told me she wasn't going to let me, uh, me off that easy. On top of that, this time, it wasn't just the person who finished last who'd have to submit to the penalty game. Yikes. Alright. She's like, that won't happen. The look at Mion's eye became that of a lion bearing its fangs. 
Because if we have to play Pretty Pretty Princess, that game is pure luck. <laughs> so there's no actual uh, like strategy in it. Or what about Candyland? Who's just to dress up in full clown, get up and buy groceries at the supermarket? I would take that over some of the things they had to do in the first chapter. Even so, I didn't feel threatened. The more into it my opponent was, the stronger I would become. And then Mion had to play Candyland, and she did not win, because <laughs> she didn't get lucky. The results of the draw were enough to make you cry conspiracy. All of the members of the club were nicely divvied up amongst the five tables. How did this happen when the draw was that random? The thought that I already caught in Mion's puppet streams made me feel uneasy. That was fine, though. I'll crush all your petty tricks. Now, where were my opponents? Everybody was headed to the table corresponding to the number on their ticket. Oh, wow! We actually do get new characters with sprites! Oh my goodness! Oh, uh, what's the... What's the button to... Oh, uh, yeah, it's the hide text box. That's where it is. Just think, just in case I want to use this one as a thumbnail. You know, make the text box disappear. Yada yada. The competition at my table was these two, huh? They look nice, and they have sprites, so they'll be important. They look younger than me. Huh? Oh, hi, Tomita. Tomita. Okamura-kun greeted me by nodding his head. So my opening round would be against my juniors from school. Just saying, but it seemed like a pretty easy matchup. Lucky! Time to destroy them without mercy. Let's play arm wrestling. With Mion's declaration, the inside of the store suddenly became lively. Everybody was yelling their favorite games at each other, trying to gain an advantage before they started. Even my two classmates, who seemed taciturn at first glance, began to fiercely insist on their own games as soon as the signal was given. Of course I would kick those suggestions aside. There was absolutely no reason to pick a game your opponent was good at. How about Go Fish? Of course they didn't agree to the games I suggested either. I could only smirk bitterly. Naturally, after five minutes, this table still couldn't agree on a game. Obeying the rules, we asked the store owner to pick decide on a game. Clearing his throat, the shop owner brought over a board game from the back of the store. It was a game called Billionaire. Oh, I play that all the time. <laughs> Quite the vintage we have here. Come to think of it, if you lose, you have to buy this game. That damned shop owner! Was he using this competition to get rid of all the games he couldn't sell? I thought he would pick the most expensive one. He said, by the way, today, this game is a thousand dollars. No! Curses! <laughs> oh, it's the game of life. This is, this is literally just a non-copyrighted version of the game of life. The two nodded in agreement, and finally the game was underway. At the time, I already had a feeling of impending crisis. I wouldn't realize why until the game progressed a bit. He doesn't have all the game pieces! This is, yep, game of life. <laughs> $5,000 in real life, by the way. Okay, I've built a bit of a lead! Bonus! Yikes! What? The tables were turned in an instant. Whoa, that's a good route. It seemed like my only piece was landing on the steady spaces. I had my doubts as to why Mion didn't bring out board games for club activities, but that reason was laid bare to me before my eyes. That's right. I had only realized it now. This game was completely based on luck! What could I possibly do to make sure I ended up in first place at the end? Are you going to pull an Arthur and cheat? I sure hope not. <laughs> the ultimate outcome of this game was decided in a place beyond human hands. I'm trying to imagine if I was 10 years old and was like gained $500. What would I even do with that? Honestly, 
Ten-year-old Artie probably would have just saved most of it. I was not that much of an impulse buyer. How are the other club members doing? My eyes naturally wandered off to the other tables. Mion's table was... What? They weren't doing anything! Had they still not decided on a game? This naive idea existed to distract me from the most frightening possibility. Mion was lounging about, leisurely holding some juice she bought from the vending machine outside in one hand. When our eyes met, she gave me a look of ease. It couldn't be. She'd already finished?! What game was it? That easily? It was probably too late to be concerned with that at this point. Only five minutes since we started, and her two opponents were already beyond recourse. They were sitting there, slumped over in disappointment. Muttering to themselves, trying to figure out what where they went wrong. For that, they'd find no answer. Is there any reason for their defeat other than they sat at the same table as Mion? She also has a gun. She probably cheated. Then what about Rena's table? The spectators were causing quite a commotion. It looked like their game was Karuta. The shop owner was apparently the one reading out the cards. Rena tended to dawdle alone and space out a lot. Wouldn't she have a hard time with this game? Okay. At the same instant the shop owner began sounding out the words, the card in question disappeared off the face of the table. No, the face of the earth! Impossible! Where did it go? It was against Rena's cheeks. That's one reason why I would never join this gaming club. Games don't, like, work unless you follow the rules. She was rubbing it there. Oh, great. Looking at the card Renner was rubbing against her cheek, it was some anime-themed version of Karuta, with rather cute moe illustrations decorating the cards. Basically, it was a picture of a pretty dog girl with a slightly large chest, panting and half in tears as she was being pulled along on a chain. This is a very sus deck of cards right there. With those types of pictures, even I could play with godlike speed. Of all the people to play that game, it had to be Rena. It was entirely possible that her fingertips were on the verge of breaking the sound barrier. Mm-hmm. Mion smiled coolly. Seeing no further reason to keep watching, she turned back. Don't buy the sus deck, Rena. Buy Uno. After that, the second the card was st started out being red, <laughs> that was my impression of Rena picking the cards up. Such decisive sounds echoed. You like your interpretation better? Fair enough. <laughs> well then, how about Satoko? Oh, she was playing a rather orthodox game. Concentration. Judging from the distressed look on Satoko's face, it seemed that she was struggling somehow. One of the main characteristics of concentration is that the pace of the game speeds up as it goes on. As the number of cards to memorize decreases, it becomes easier to match several pairs in a row. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that the first person to take over the flow of the match can run away as the winner. The cards still in play had decreased. If you had memorized the cards that had been turned over before, you should have a good chance to sweep the table at this point. Satoko probably knew of the positions of all the remaining cards. However, her turn came a little too late. If her opponent followed up, the match would be decided. True. Everyone wants those $500. Honestly, it's, it's a give and take. Oftentimes, I think we have a tendency to think back and be like, man, the good old days, like, they were so much better. And it's like, in some ways, that was true. Like, you know, you think back, it's like, you're like, wow, like, way back in the day, like, people were, like, a really tight-knit community, everyone knew everybody, you know, like, you had just close relationships with people, it was a simpler time. But on the other hand, if you, uh, got an infection, then you died. And now we've got, you know, modern medicine, which really helps out. We also have things like air travel. You hope it doesn't drag on like Chapter 1? Probably not. I hope it starts with the creepy stuff soon. This guy. Did he have the locations of the remaining cards memorized? He was completely certain of his victory. The tension on his face relaxed. Well, she's in trouble. <laughs> I whispered that in a bored manner as I turned my attention back to my own game. I spun the wheel. One, two, three, four, five. Eh? Sonna. Tascani kokoa. Hato no ace. There was a commotion at Satoko's table as the shout rang out. 
The other two at my table turned around in surprise. I didn't. After all, there really wasn't anything to be surprised about. The onlookers were confused, most of them certain that the Ace of Hearts should have been there. There's no way. I must be seeing things. It must have been because I was excited. So assured in his victory, his, the distress over his defeat ran deep. Hm. <laughs> That's how it is. If his opponent wasn't Satoko, then the Ace of Hearts certainly would have been there. What a fool. Oh, she cheated! Cool, so she should be disqualified immediately. When you're up against Satoko, you can't let your guard down for a moment until the battle is over. Oh, I was talking way back in the day, not just back in the 1980s. Yes, obviously there was air travel back then. With a refined tone of voice reserved only for winners, Satoko called out to me. From the casual observer, it must have looked like she only eked out a victory. From my point of view, however, she was only playing around. The roles of the winner and loser had already been decided. It was nothing more than child's play. The laughable part of it is that her opponents didn't know his role had already been assigned. Meaning, you cheated. Satoko was a trapper. Her true talent was never having one misfire. Setting off only one trap was more than enough. <laughs> Ain't that cool. The fact that the other club members were winning one after another with their own brand of play only added to my impatience at my own lack of progress. Oh, right. How is Rikachan doing? How is our club sly little fox doing? What the heck is that? Over in that corner, the mood at the table was decidedly different from the others. The game at Rikachan's table was... You know that battery-powered fishing game? The one where the fish opened and closed their mouths as they rotated on the platform and you used a magnetic fishing rod to pick them up? That old thing. It seemed they had planned on competing by seeing who could catch the most fish, but... It had become an atmosphere you could hardly call competitive. Oh no! Her simp club is just going to let her win. Okay, there's a discrepancy between the voice that we just heard and the fact that the voice apparently belongs to someone called Man. Just saying, that man definitely don't sound like he hit puberty yet. I knew that Rika-chan had already charmed her opponents, along with the onlookers before the matches had even begun, but... Brilliantly played. The corner had become an informal meeting of the Rika Furude fan club. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Hearing that, she glanced over my way briefly. This is my way of getting serious. That's what I heard. Yep. A masterful technique. <laughs> Dude, are you gonna stop sipping over the girls in play? Yeah, come on. <laughs> Darn it, again? <laughs> in contrast, my game. What an unseemly situation this was. Noticing the uneasiness creeping across my face, my companions came to see how I was doing. Okamura, who had run lots of money out of the elite course, began to count for a stack of white $100,000 bills. Sorry, dude, the game's called Billionaire, and you're not even a millionaire yet. Those two, it looked like they would easily surpass a million dollars. Poor Keiji. I'm gonna have $500 at the end of this, Mion. Mion's tone of voice was grim from the get-go. It was her disappointment and disgust as club president. Hey, I didn't pick the luck-based game. Ruletto 
二人に目をつぶって、百数えてもらって。Bro, you can't cheat. That's against the rules. Mika chan gently pet my head. Still, she wasn't too happy. Well, you could have fooled me with the sprite there. You know what, Satoko? I don't like the attitude. You only won because you cheated. <laughs> You're the biggest loser out of everybody. <laughs> Ren is the one who had the most skill. I guess we didn't see Mio's game. But I'm pretty sure she just paid everyone two twenties to lose on purpose. Like I said, how am I supposed to make a comeback with this game relying entirely on luck? Right, Mio? And that's why I don't play Mario Party. Mio's face, however, was an almost unbelievably indifferent, like she was watching something completely unexciting. She then turned her back without saying a word. It was a pathetic voice that irked even myself. Oh, brother. <laughs> Bribery is also cheating. It's not a very satisfying form of victory. Then again, getting lucky also isn't satisfying. Yeah, use your psychic abilities. Yeah, she definitely just bought off her competitors. Mion, in a bad mood, cast me aside and disappeared into the depths of the shop. Maybe it was because she, it had become an awkward situation, but the spectators dispersed from around my table. Damn it! Are you saying I'm not serious about this? Are you saying if I were serious, I would have settled the game of chance in 10 seconds? If I were serious? If I were serious? Everybody was praying for my victory. They believed in me. Did I betray their expectations? Was it because I wasn't serious? No, it's because it's game of luck. Ugh. The two of them were timidly trying to resume play. I didn't respond to that. The table sunk into silence. The owner, thinking I was forfeiting, started to announce the cancellation of the game. At that moment, the demon inside me let loose a howl and awakened. I get it now, Mion. What it means for me to be serious. I'll show you!